What's going on, everybody? My name is Master Sergeant Dave Sanlitri, and welcome to another episode of Generation Space. That's right, we have a sign this time. Pretty cool. Uh, so right now we're at uh, ULA, and we're here in, uh, just south of Denver, and I have some great uh, guests on our show today. So why don't you uh, introduce yourselves, and we can get going. All right, I'm Zach Henney. I'm a trajectory engineer here at the United Launch Alliance, and I'm working the GPS-301 mission, well, GPS-3 Magellan mission for ULA. So the big brain here. All right, establish that. No big deal. <laughs> so and I'm, I'm Captain David Leopis, and I actually had an opportunity last year with an Air Force program called Education with Industry, where I actually worked with United Launch Alliance for just about a year, and I was uh, out at Cape Canaveral for the most part, but got to do a lot of traveling, see a lot of rocket launches and manufacturing facilities and all kinds of neat stuff. So you went from that uniform to this uniform, back, back to that Back to this uni uniform, exactly. Man, uh, and then eventually to that uniform. There we go. You'll get there, right? <laughs> I'll get there. I haven't upgraded yet, but. Nice, nice. So like, Zach, I know you've been part of this uh, GPS-3 for quite a bit uh, now. You got to see it almost like cradle to grave because we're a couple of months out from launching uh, the next GPS-3. Coming up soon. Coming up soon. So tell me, how, what, what's what been the highlights of uh, working this project? So for me, uh, one really cool thing is it's my first Delta mission that I've worked. So just been super interesting. Um, slight process differences between a Delta and an Atlas. So sure. it's been cool. Uh, I had about a year of just doing different studies with the Atlases. So it was interesting to come over to that. But for me, it's specifically like I got started with the preliminary mission analysis back in 2017. We went from that, which is, you know, our kind of first look at a mission like this go from that to our final mission analysis, which is a little more formal, gives a good estimate of what we're doing for our customers. And then we're now in the best estimate trajectory cycle. So for me, it's pretty cool, especially getting to the BET where it's like, oh man, we're coming up quick because we start that just about two and a half months out. So, so we're around it's now. exciting. Yeah. That is exciting. Like, <laughs> how do you explain this to uh, like what you do, the mission GPS three to um, like your mom when you call her on the phone? Like, uh, how's that? How's that go? Uh, so my joke with uh, my family, like when I see extended family and I don't really want to explain what I'm doing, is just that I'm the FedEx guy of space. Like, it's my job to take something and get it where it needs to be. Um, when they well, start pressing me do. on that, you know, it gets a little more complicated. So you're like the GPS for GPS. Yeah. In this case. Right? <laughs> exactly. GPS inception. <laughs> <laughs> How do I get GPS there? GPS squared. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm, you know, just helping to get along and get it onto orbit in one very healthy piece yeah. well, that's important that's important because you know without ways i'm lost Yo. so I, I, need, I need i need my gps <laughs> right right now delta if i'm not mistaken has launched a lot of gps satellites not necessarily the delta 4 like we see behind us but yeah delta 2 was pretty much built for the gps program and was the workhorse like you see all the cool fairings with the little Shark slime, um, um, the shark teeth fairings for, I forget who they were painted in honor of, but there's a good history on Delta of GPS. So it's nice to be a part of that. So so kind of a dual historic thing, right? I mean, like there's the his, the legacy of GPS on Delta, but then this is the last Delta medium, correct? Yep, the last of the single sticks. So it'll be cool to see it go. Seems like the one consistent in space is change. Yeah, I don't know if it's oxymoron or what, but uh, it just seems like that the business keeps, keeps on growing and like the things we can do. It's like, hold my beer, watch what I can do next. <laughs> <laughs> sure, like uh, you have an interesting perspective too. Um, so, you know, ULA, um, we're Air Force, we're kind of like the customer. Um, what what have you learned kind of working with both ULA and now uh, being, uh, you know, almost a spokesperson for Air Force Space Command? Uh, what's the connective tissue like there? Well, it's, it's really kind of interesting because uh, I know you've, You've been kind of a space enthusiast all, basically all your life, right? Yeah. I mean, it kind of seems like from Just what kind of know. sucked into it. <laughs> uh, whereas I, 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 you know, space was cool when I was a kid because shuttles around and all that kind of stuff, but it just sort of faded. And so, you know, to be like part of Generation Space now, I've been in this space industry for a couple of years, and ULA was sort of my just right off the deep end immersion into it. And so I went from being a public affairs officer that didn't know anything about space to having to learn all the launch stuff and, and get to go and see the launches and see the, the processing and, and all the things that go into mission assurance and everything that goes on from the ULA side, from the Air Force side, how that all integrates so that we have a successful launch and we get stuff on orbit to uh, help the warfighter, and in this case, to help you know, six billion users worldwide with GPS. Um, and so just to bring that all home and then come here and be able to talk about it and share that enthusiasm, because I mean, space is really cool. 
It is cool. And uh, you, you used my favorite term, generation space. It's kind of like when you're watching a movie and they say the name of the movie in the movie. You're like, oh, my goodness, this is so exciting. They did it. Uh, but generation space. So, like, Zach, you've been, uh, what, ULA for, like, three, four years now? Just like, coming up on three, yeah. So, like, uh, when you were going to school for, uh, what was your major? I was a major uh, aerospace engineering with uh, astronautical focus. I feel like th- that um, that kind of degree, like really, uh, it's catching on almost like like space. Like when our, you know, at least our parents, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you too. <laughs> uh, space back in like the '60s was so exciting. It's exploration left and right, and then um, like right it started to kind of phase, like almost like plateau. But then like like this is the cool stuff now. This is what you turn on in the news and you see on Instagram feeds. You see this all over the place. What's it been like to kind of uh, be part of this? You know, about Resurgence. be part of Generation Space. You know the being the cool kid again. <laughs> yeah, so I went to Embry Riddle Aeronautical University out in Arizona. And as the name implies, you know, we have a pretty good aviation heritage. And within the aerospace engineering degree, there's the air, aero track and the astro track. And when I came in, there's like 10 of us on the astro track. We were kind of clicky because there was not many of us. Um, but by the time we graduated, like the astro track had come to outnumber the aero kids. So that was a pretty cool evolution. And like, you look at the time we were there, you have a lot more missions going off, a little more development. You had Vulcan. Uh, I know a lot of my classmates and I tried to spam the naming contest for Vulcan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, yeah, Vulcan. So was that your idea? That wasn't That no? was not mine. I don't remember what I put in, um, but we're all pretty satisfied when it came in because, you know, it has a good heritage. you keeping the, like, kind of the atlas theme alive you know, atlas saturn all those classic names so it's sort of vulcan with the mix but so, so explain real quick what what vulcan is so vulcan is our next generation it's coming online in uh 2021 to replace both atlas and delta uh we'll still be flying both atlas and delta as we start to fly out vulcan um but it's gonna be it's gonna be a big rocket we're gonna be flying uh only five meter vehicles. So right now Atlas is a three meter body with a four or five meter fairing. Um, Delta is a five meter with either a four or five meter fairing. Um, Vulcan standard is a five meter vehicle. Uh, It's got two big BE-4s on the bottom for booster thrust. We're flying two RL-10s on an upgraded Centaur. So it's gonna, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna open a lot of doors for us and it's going to make things interesting for ULA in the 20s as we bring it online and fly more missions. Generation space grows even more. Exactly. That's right. And now you're working on here at ULA the, the coolest projects, the, the, the cutting edge stuff. Um, and then you're partnering with the Air Force to, to not only just help fellow Americans, but like uh, but our war fighters downrange who use GPS-3. Do you ever stop and think about uh, GPS-3? This is what our airmen and our soldiers and Marines and sailors are all going to be using. Do you ever th- Am I getting a little too into the weeds? Do you ever think about that stuff? No, Do I get too proud um, and patriotic? <laughs> no, it's, it's, I mean, like, a lot of people just kind of think about it as the app on their phone that helps them get to the grocery store. But, like, GPS has a lot more legacy and heritage and power behind it than just, like, I love Waze too, but, <laughs> I mean, it's just scratching the surface of really what it's doing. So, yeah, it's cool to be a part of that and know that I'm helping out and, keeping people safe yeah that's awesome and like so working on this project with gps3 what would you say has been the highlight your best memory maybe oh man um yet to be made (laughs) i i'm I'm hoping the best memory slot is going to be the launch um because that's going to be my first one seen in person so i'm super excited for that uh but for me like being a part of this program here, especially trajectory side, like I've been able to flex my skills and learn so much in terms of trajectory development and how it's going to help me in the future here at ULA. So that's been, that's been great. I owe a lot to this program. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So what's been the thing you've been uh, enjoying most since, uh, since being part of like this, this space team and um, getting to see GPS three from like a conceptual idea, uh, your time with ULA and now, uh, you know, it's about to get launched, uh, you know, in July. Well, I, think that the excitement behind you know he was talking about it it, it, being air force you know we kind of have to be agnostic when it comes to you know launch providers um because what we want is our asset on orbit you know doing what it's meant to do and 
uh, to be able to work with the different teams, whether it's the the, the launch, you know, we're talking about the ride to space right. on this episode. And the and, FedEx. You know, so, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you, you can kind of compare it like that. And it's just sort of, you know, who, who gets it up there and then also who builds it, you know, working with Lockheed Martin and, and some of the other folks that are heavily involved in this. And then, you know, I actually got to go see the first GPS-3 satellite. Uh, launch. Well, actually, I missed it by day. They scrubbed, and then I left. Um, Shocker! But I got to watch it on on, uh, on the internet. But I was down there for that when you know V Potus and everybody was down there, and there's just all this excitement about GPS three because I mean this is the next generation. This is what's going to make our constellation resilient moving into the future. Because space is no longer just this quiet place where we send something up and and just let stuff work, and we have these operators, you know, at these computer terminals, just kind of making sure that all the beeps and the boops are okay, and and you know everything's fueled up and good to go, you know, now it's a contested and congested domain where we have to really worry about, you know, um, collisions and, and about, you know, threats, not just to the physical spacecraft, but, you know, whether it's cyber threats and, you know, all these things that are changing the way our paradigm and the way we have to look at space as a warfighting domain now and not just a place where GPS satellites float around so we can get from point A to point B using our, our blue dot on our phone, you know. Right, yeah. So really, the, we, to get back to your question, the excitement is just to seeing how important space is and really wrapping my head around how much space impacts the warfighter and the general population on you know every single moment of every single day yeah you know i heard someone talk about like uh, what happened if we didn't have our space stuff like if, it, if, if they flipped the switch and as americans we just didn't have our space capabilities uh yeah we talk about the little things like gps on like on our phone but you know sli swiping a card you know not being able to get money not being able to get gas like that's i mean it really just puts the importance of how what how why we need this and why we need to always be thinking about how do we you know lock this down and make sure this is always a capability uh should someone try to take it from us um i know that's something we talk about all the time and uh to be part of it that's gonna be pretty neat um so you talked about the fact that this is the first time you've got to see something from cradle to grave yeah what's something you've that you didn't realize that like being part of this from uh, from start to finish that you didn't have if you were just to work on one aspect of it um I think just like the overall scope, because in trajectory, we often will pick up different parts of a mission for somebody else. Like for me in the BET right now, it's really busy. So I have another guy in my group doing like a preliminary setup for what we use on the day of launch. Okay. And so like when you're just doing slices of a mission, like, yeah, you get an idea for what's happening, but you don't get like an understanding of like the finer details. Like what's really cool about this mission is the flight azimuth that we're flying along to get to the target orbit um, is going to take us along the east coast of the United States. And so we just ran today a preliminary launch viewing analysis. And, like, people in Maine can potentially see this on its way up. Wow. So, like, yeah, that's a cool fact to, like, see now. But, like, for me, having figured out that flight azimuth back in the PMA cycle, like, it's cool. All right, yeah, hey, here's a real-world impact. And so, like, just starting at the start, you get a lot more sense of, like, the grandeur of, like, the actual trajectory development. And it's neat kind of brings it all together but perspective kind of shows that the left hand right hand kind of works together yeah a little bit like that yeah that's awesome that's awesome sir what's something that's uh that you're looking forward to most seeing out of uh this upcoming gps3 launch what what, what makes you most proud to be part of uh you know this mission well i think that one thing you learn uh, whether i mean in the military or or you know working in a company like ula i mean team is such a huge thing and you know you have members of the team that aren't even the ones that you see out there doing the, you know, the actual stuff on TV. Let's say a football team. You got all the people, the coaches and the and the, the assistants and everybody that does their part to make everything happen. And when you look at a launch like this, I mean, you look at the screen behind you there, and there's a there's a Delta IV there at Cape Canaveral, and and that gets launched, and some people just take that for granted and be like, oh yeah, it's Cape Canaveral. They launch rockets there. That's what they do. But how did that get there? Right. I mean, that process begins way, way, way far away and way before that, what we see right there. I mean, we're talking um, the procurement and then the fabrication of the rocket in Decatur. I mean, ULA has their factory in Decatur where they, they roll out these you know, massive sheets of metal and they assemble these rockets and make all the fuel tanks and, and you know, make the motors to it and all this different stuff. And then they put it on this big boat and take it down the rivers and then into the ocean. And, you know, for Cape Canaveral, go around Florida and up. Or if you got to go to California, and then you got to go to the Panama Canal and, you know, all this transport to get everything everywhere. So you got these ship crews and you've got these fabricators in Decatur doing all the touch work and putting all these things together. And then it gets to the Cape and then there's all the processing that they do in the horizontal integration facility there where 
things come together and then they put it up on the stand and more things come together and then they bring the spacecraft out and that puts on and more things come together. Couple and of moving parts here. So there's a, there's a there's a heck of a lot that goes on in in the process of putting a, a GPS satellite on orbit. Where so for me, what's exciting is is all of these hundreds and thousands of people that are part of this team that brings us all together to watch that thing go up and do what it's supposed to do. And just the excitement and the satisfaction that they all feel from that, I think is pretty amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we're getting cl a little close to time. We've got five minutes left. So one thing I'm just really curious to hear, like I'll start with you, Zach. What are you most excited for um, come come launch day? What are, you, what, what are you most proud of, excited about? What, what's getting you going? I mean, for me, it's easy seeing two years of analyses actually come together into a real launch and being able to be sitting there and just watch it go like that's gonna be incredible for me so you you can actually be at the cape for yeah that, i'm actually should? gonna be out there for that one so it'll be it'll be exciting <laughs> well, you guys nice. get to meet up again yeah. that's right there we go yeah we'll be there for uh, episode uh the next uh, one of our episodes so that'll be exciting that's awesome how about you sir what are you most excited about well uh, yeah like i said the the just everybody seeing the culmination of this but i mean the rocket launch how can you not be excited about just the 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 noise and the feel and the and I, I think what time of day this is like a morning launch right so um, we'll the night the night launches are 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 special because I mean it's just a huge fireball in the sky and it's just super cool to see but I, I like the day launches because you can actually see it going all the way up and and you know watch the separation of the the boosters and and all that and you can see it with your you know naked eye standing there and so. I mean, this is there's there's nothing that beats a rocket launch. That's pretty awesome. That's yeah. pretty that's pretty awesome. So, uh, we're getting close to the end. Is there anything that you know we haven't talked about that maybe you want to mention or foot stomp or, uh, yeah, what are, what's on your mind? What's on your mind, champ? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't think of anything extra to. Yeah. I know we, with me. <laughs> I know we talked a lot about a lot. So you know, Jersey Italian, I speak quick, and we talk we we cover a lot. So how about you, sir? What do you what what uh what's on your mind? No, I think this is just a really cool, uh, it's just indicative when we see, you know, young people coming into the space industry and being so excited about it. And, we're, you know, like you mentioned, there's there's this sort of shift where, like, everybody was there for airplanes and now they're like, hey, let's, let's look at space. What's going on in space? And I know talking with folks at the Air Force Academy, for example, you know, talking about everybody's like, oh, I'm going to come in and be a pilot in the Air Force. And now there's this excitement of I'm going to come in and be a space operator uh. because there's just this, there's this shift, whether it's in the military or on the civil side, where space is just becoming a, a very a hot topic and, and there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of companies doing a lot of amazing things that – you know, we would have never thought possible that that we're just trying to see where this goes from here. I mean, who knows what what comes next in a decade or two decades from now? It's going to be amazing, and you get to be a part of that yeah, in, in this industry. It's an exciting time to be here. That's super cool. <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's it's exciting just to think about the possibilities. You know, I think about my grandpa who worked uh, you know at Cape Canaveral for a couple of years, and I you know I think if he was around right now, I think he'd be pretty stoked. You know, so this is a, a fun time. It's uh, it's exciting. What's next? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, guys, thanks. Thank you both for being here and for taking the time to uh, speak with you, uh, speak with us. But I got a little, a little something for you. So we're Generation Space. We have our great Generation Space crew member Pat right here. Okay. So Zach, you know, uh, sir, you have, uh, you'll get one uh, after the show. But here you go, our Generation Space sticker. You know, your Colorado style, throw it on your snowboarder and your helmet, and there you go. rock it with some pride. Put it on top two of the mountain bike. <laughs> there we go. There that we works go. too. <laughs> cool. Well, that's uh, that's it for this generate uh, episode of Generation Space. Thanks for joining us, and uh, hope you look forward to the next one where we continue this discussion about GPS 3.